In the past, we've been dealing with equations that only contain one variable. And now we have equations that contain two variables. And since you have two variables, that means that your solutions will take on the form of an ordered pair. So let's look at this. We have an equation x plus 2y equals 7, and we need to complete the ordered pairs. So this one right here is telling us that x is negative 9, and we just need to find out what y is. Well, it's a simple matter of plugging in what we know and solving for what we don't know. So I'm going to replace this x. Uh, let's do this. So I'm going to do parentheses for the x. I just want to make sure that I'm plugging in to this correctly. I'm replacing x with negative 9, and I'm just going to solve this equation. So that's negative 9 plus 2y equals 7. Solve this for y by first adding 9 to both sides, just like you would solve any other linear equation. So 2y is equal to 16, which means that y is equal to 8. All right, so don't box y equals 8. We're going to complete this ordered pair by writing 8 up here. So what this tells me is that the ordered pair negative 9 comma 8 is a solution to this. And if we get enough of these solutions, we can come up with a shape and come up with a picture, and we're going to talk about what that means here in just a moment. Uh, for this one right here, for this one, you don't know the x, but you're given the y. So let's see if we can figure that one out. So it's x plus 2 parentheses equals 7. Do the work like I'm showing so that when you plug things in, you're doing it the right way. So instead of the y, we write parentheses, and we're plugging in the 2. And then we'll just work this out. So x plus 4 equals 7, which means x is equal to 3. So sometimes when it's kind of simple like this, there's not really a whole lot of work that you have to show. Um, we, you may not need to show minus 4 on both sides, but if, if you do, if that provides a bit of closure for you, then great. So x equals 3, so my answer completes the order pair 3, 2. So we're going to jump over to Desmos real quick so that you can see what this guy looks like. All right. So over here in Desmos, we're going to type in our equation. Now, if you're doing this in your graphing calculator, you have to solve for y. But in Desmos, you can type the equation in exactly as you see it. So you can do x plus 2y equals 7. And when you do this, you'll be able to see that we have our two solutions here. Um, let's see. I'm going to do this real quick. All right. So we said negative 9, comma 8. So if you come over here to negative 9, and up here, I mean, it's, there we go. So there's negative 9, 8. And the other guy we had was 3, 2. And you see that if you come over here to x equals 3 and y equals 2, that is also another solution to this equation. Now, when we have our line drawn, we need to make sure that we understand that the reason we have this line and the reason that we graph it all is because this line shows us all solutions to that equation. It's not just these two guys. But every point on here, even the weird ones, like that, all of these guys, all of these infinite number of points, are solutions to that equation. And since we can't list all of those solutions, that's why we go to graphing. And that kind of leads us to some graphing stuff that we're going to be seeing here in just a moment. All right, let's go to another example. All right. So here we have y squared equals x plus 5, and we want to complete the ordered pair. All right, so in this one, you don't have x, and you're trying to find... Or, no, yeah, you don't have x, and you're given y. I don't know what I was about to say. So we're going to rewrite this, so that's parentheses squared for the y equals x plus 5. We are given that y equals negative 6, so we plug that in, and we just work this out. So 36 is equal to x plus 5, 
which means subtract 5 on both sides. That means that x is equal to 31. All right, so that completes the ordered pair. And what about this other one? This other one, you're given x, you need to find y. So, I'm trying to solve for y, so it's y squared is equal to, parentheses for the x, because that's the guy that I know. Let's plug in 11. And I get y squared is equal to, well, that's just 11 plus 5, that's 16. And I need to solve this guy for y. Now, got to be careful. Because there's a y squared, and think about what we've done so far with quadratic equations, to undo the square, I have to use the square root property. So I'm putting the square root here, which means I have to have the plus or minus. So I actually get two solutions here. I get that y is equal to plus or minus 4. So that's what's going to complete the ordered pair. So it's not just this guy with a 4. It's going to be with a negative 4 as well. So you'd actually have this that works with 4 but you would also have the ordered pair 11, negative 4, right? You get two solutions for this. Now let's see what this looks like on the graph so that we can get a, an idea about what's happening. All right, so let's do this. And we're going to erase this and do y squared. So y. y squared, I'm not sure why to press the other time, equals x plus 5. So you get this parabola that's oriented uh, sideways right here. And so let's see if we can identify our values. So we had 31, negative 6. So if you come all the way here to 31, all the way here, here's 31, and that's going to correspond to this y value of negative 6. So when y was negative 6, the only answer that corresponds is x equals 31. But then we had this other guy. We said that when x equals 11, so here's 11 right here, you see we get two solutions. You get 11 comma 4, and you get 11 comma negative 4. So when x equals 11, there were two solutions for y. So that's one of those kind of weird things that we see. But of course, this is when you have y squared. And y squared definitely changes things around for us. So when you're doing these problems in my math lab, just make sure that you watch out for that. And keep in mind what that y squared shape looks like. If it were x squared, it'd be oriented, say, a parabola like up or down. If it's y squared, then it's a sideways parabola. And that's very important for us to know for some of the graphing stuff we're going to be seeing later.